how do you handle scale foliage on a juniper and how do you avoid needles to form? With which species did you start your bonsai journey? I think most people will answer, I started with a juniper and maybe not one of the Chinese junipers like this one, but one of these prickly ones. In fact, this is the one that I started my journey with. So this is the tree that I started my bonsai journey with. It was two and a half meters tall when I got it. And this was all alive and I created this tree out of it over a period of about 11 years. But we're not going to talk about this species. This nice Itogawa has been my teacher. This plant has taught me almost everything that I know about how to handle this type of foliage. When I got this, this was a huge shrub and during the workshop I took it all down. All these branches that you see here I took off and as a result the next summer, of course, yes, the whole tree was one big ball of needles, empty tufts, it looked like a plucked chicken. What did I do? How did I go ahead and make this a nice tree as you see now? Let's dive into that. How do you handle scale foliage on a juniper and how do you avoid needles to form? When it comes to foliage type on junipers there's two different types that you can distinguish. There's one like this one and here all the leaves are grown out as larger scales. Um, this is a needle type juniper and it always has these larger needles on the branches. Now there's another type of foliage, scale type, and we see that in this one. Here you can tell that the branches are green. It looks like there's no individual leaves, but if you look very carefully, you see that the branch, the green actually consists of tiny, tiny overlapping scales, uh, which make the branch green. This also answers straight away one of the questions that you sometimes see. Yes, it is very normal for a juniper to turn yellow. Um, in the middle of spring, all of a sudden, the inside of a juniper can turn completely yellow. And what is happening at that point is that the scales on the juniper are dying off. That is due to aging, partially due to shading. But as the plant grows, new foliage appears on the outside. And the older leaves, the older scales on the inside, they are given up by the plant. They turn brown, they turn yellow, and eventually they'll fall off. That's the same for scale foliage as it is for needle foliage. Now, if you see your whole plant going yellow or the outside of the branches go yellow or fresh growth goes yellow, then you have a problem. But if it is only the oldest part of the branch, so the parts of the branch that are most on the inside that turns yellow, that's very, very normal. After first styling, often a juniper looks a little bit like this. Um, what you get is that tiny little branches on the inside, they uh, die off because putting a wire on then you damage the branches. So these tiny little branchlets, that's very normal that they die off after a couple of weeks. Um, of course, there's people who can wire without this happening, but in my garden, quite normally, I work too quickly, I am rough with my fingers, or I just want to get it done. And then, yeah, I did get these little branches dying off. Now, if we take a look at the juniper that was wired a few weeks earlier, you can see that the foliage has started to fill out again. You see here, in the elbows of all the branches where some branches died off, in fact, there's new growth starting up. This is what actually is going to form my new pet. All these longer sticking out branches, that's nice. It keeps the branch alive, but eventually I'm going to cut back to the smaller branches on the inside. Looking carefully at the branches that are growing out, you see that there's a lot of needle foliage forming. This is normal for this species, or actually this variety, and this is an Itoigawa juniper. An Itoigawa is a juniper that originally comes from Japan. And actually the name comes from a city in Japan where it was originally first traded when they discovered it in the mountains. Itoigawa always, after a big prune, creates this needle-like foliage. Now the biggest mistake that you can make is try to cut this off. Cutting off this foliage will only make the problem worse. Um, because what's going to happen if you cut this off? It will just do exactly the same thing. It will create more of the foliage with all the needles. But then how do you actually get your tree to stay compact? That's one of the problems. You see here already there are some longer branches growing and the tree is not getting any nicer this way. One of the things that you can do if you have just styled the tree, you just let it grow for a year. You don't do anything. Of course, there's a lot of tutorials online that say you need to go out and you need to pinch all the growing tips out of the profile. Don't do that. Just let it grow for a year. If you look carefully, um, you can see here, this is all the needle foliage, but at the end, you see that scale foliage is starting to occur. So the plant 
just by letting it grow, cures its problem by itself. Now this is skill foliage. Over time you will get back putting here in the elbows. Then you can take this back. Then you just cut it here and new growth sits there. If you let the branches grow for a year, um, then all this foliage here is going to look like this. You're going to have very long runners. This is an indication of a branch that is well, very healthy and strong. In fact, that's the reason why I left this branch on. This branch is not needed for the design, but if you look from the front, it's not hurting design at the moment either. So this feeds the roots, it strengthens the tree and helps this tree recover. Here on top, you already see the first runner is starting to form. This is what you can expect your tree to look like. I say it is a year, but it could of course be half a year or two months, very much dependent on the season during which you did your first tiling. And what you see here, there is long runners everywhere in the tree. Indicative of a healthy tree, ready to recover. And more importantly, this is the way that back budding occurs in junipers. What you see happening here is that we have this big runner in top of the tree, but here at the base, this is one of the pruning sites, and here you see a bud that has started to grow, and the same here. And in fact, I'm not sure whether it's visible on screen, but there on the side branch, there also a trunk starting to grow. So this is the moment that you say, now I can start pruning the branches back. When you're pruning back the juniper, um, don't just cut in the green part, but go all the way into the old foliage and look for the brown. There you make sure that you leave enough green that the pet doesn't get disturbed completely, but cut back all the way into the brown. Make sure that you don't cut the green foliage, but you just cut the center stem. Now, once you've done that, what is going to happen is that all the energy that was being pulled here through the main trunk is now going to be distributed over all the little growing tips because every ending here is a little growing tip and these will all start growing more strongly. And therefore you get a uniform growth here at the same time at the base of the branch, which you can see right here, there are back buds happening. In fact, there's even a back bud here in the elbow. So that means that all these yellow needles, which occurred when I first styled the tree, are now dying off. This branch is going to go brown and I can just remove all of these. This bud will take over, these buds will take over. Here, I'm just going to again, cut back into the brown. And this way you develop the foliage on the juniper. This I can now do throughout the tree, so that everywhere there's a uniform back budding response. Um, and the back buds that have formed can now start growing all over the tree. Naturally, this is Itoigama, and it is known for a very, very tight, compact growing foliage. Therefore, it is my foliage of preference when I graft other trees. This is the only juniper variety that I take cuttings of, but when I'm trimming a tree like this, I also always take cuttings of these. Um, I understand that cuttings are hard to get a hold of, of Itoigawa. Import from Japan is difficult, it's expensive, and not many people in my region propagate these. So I am propagating them. In your tree you will come across spots like this one. Here you have a very weak branch, and there's very strong back budding below it. And then of course, now is also the time to remove that sort of weaker foliage. Here below as well, there's a lot of weak foliage and I can remove all this. Straight away the tree looks a little bit healthier and what you are left with is only a tuft of very strong foliage, which will carry the branch. And all the weaker foliage that's not giving the tree all that much is gone. With the old and the weak foliage gone, air can move into the canopy, but at the same time also light, further enhancing the back bedding. Everything that hangs down from a branch at the bottom can also be removed, but here at the lower branches I prefer to leave it on, because it's not hindering anything, yet it is giving some more support for the lower branches, which are typically already weak. This is pretty much all that there is to know about creating denser foliage pads on Juniper sinensis. 
without running into the problem of stress foliage. I hope this will help you a little bit. Let me know in the comments below whether this was of use, whether I've forgotten something. This tree is ready. Well, maybe this one can still go. Ready to go in the garden. If you want to know how to take cuttings of junipers, there's a link down below in the description. Thank you for watching. Although there are many junipers that have scale foliage, only a few species make the very compact growth that Itoigawa in the Chinese juniper group makes. This, for instance, is a garden Sabina. Um, they grow much more loosely. What do you think? Is this the right pot for this tree?